welcome back my chicklings. Right, so this is now the last example, right, for graph interpretation. This is example number four, right. And obviously we can't leave out um, the trig functions, right. So we are also going to have graph interpretation being tested um, in trigonometry. Okay, right, so we have over here that the graph of f of x is equal to the sine of 30 degrees minus x and g of x is equal to a cos of x are drawn right for the interval minus 90 degrees to 360 right so basically what that is saying is that where these graphs start right that is 90 degrees okay and over here where they end that is 360 Okay. So we're only looking at that specific interval, right? Now, nice thing about the trig functions, right, is that unlike the graphs in paper one, right, where they are not actually drawn to scale, right, the trig functions are actually drawn to scale, right? So you can read off um, the values accurately um, from the the theta the axis, actually, in this case, right? So it says use the diagram right to answer the following questions right the first question says determine the value of a right and the second question says write down the values right of x for which um x or theta in this case doesn't really matter right we usually talk about x values okay for which g of x is greater than or equal to f of x right so if we go back to our conditions over here Right, you'll see that the condition that they want you to learn is f of x is less than or equal to g of x, right? What they're asking you here is g of x greater than or equal to f of x, right? So the important thing is not the names being swapped around, that doesn't matter, right? The important thing is that they want you to learn a condition of less than or equal, right? And understanding that as being the first graph being below the second graph, right? So in other words, first graph being below the second graph or being equal to the second graph, right? You are interested in those situations, okay? All right, so now, since we are looking for greater than, right? Even though it wasn't one of the conditions that we were asked, right, or required to learn, right? We can now understand from that one that this one is saying that we're looking for the situation where the first graph, which in this case is g of x, right, is above f of x, right? So what is g of x? g of x is the cosine function, right? So we're looking for where the cosine function is above the sine function or equal to the sine function, right? So if we're talking about equal to the sine function, we're also interested in where it intersects the sine function, okay? Right, so for the first question, determine the value of a, right? We go to our function and we look where is a, right? So we see, okay, a is in front of the trig function, right? And we know that anything in front of the trig function is actually talking about the amplitude of the trig function, okay? So then you go to the diagram, since they said you use the diagram, right? And you see, okay, there is G, right? So there is G, okay? What is its amplitude? Well, the distance from the x-axis to the highest point is two, right? So then from the diagram, you can just simply state that A is equals to 2. Okay, right, so now let's go to this one. Write down the values of x for which g of x is above or equal to f of x, right? So going back to the sketch, right, let's first worry about the equals to, right? So we can see here's the first point where it's equals to, right, this point over here, okay? Where else are they intersecting? Over here. Okay. And where else? Over here. Okay. All right. So if we look at this, right? So you can see over here, you have a distance of the first interval from 0 to 150, 
right? And this is divided into one, two, three, four, five, right, divisions. So 150 divided by five gives you a single interval of 30 degrees, right? Or you could have figured that out by looking at where the sine function starts, right? Because basically this is the same as f of x is equal to the sine of negative x minus 30 degrees, okay? So now because we know that um, the original sine function starts at 0, 0, right? This one has now been shifted 30 degrees to the right, okay? So the old coordinate of 0 degrees 0, right, as the starting point, this now becomes, right, um, moving from 0 to the right, you're going to end up at 30 degrees, right? And nothing has happened to your y values, right, and also in terms of the equation, 0, okay? So that is that coordinate over there. Okay, so that's 30 degrees, right? So that's one way that you could have figured out that this is 30 degrees, or you could have just used the method of the interval, right? And then seeing how many times was that interval divided, okay? So if this is 30 degrees, right, then this is zero, this is minus 30, this will be minus 60. I'm, I'm missing a minus over here, silly me, okay? So then this is minus 60, meaning that this coordinate is minus 60 degrees, right, and it's at a y value of 1, okay, oh, let's check this other one, this point of intersection, this one, okay, so if this is 30, then we have 30, 60, 90, right, and then this is going to be um, 120, okay, And it's at a y value of minus 1. Okay, it's that point of intersection. Okay. All right, so now let's look at this one. Well, this one is quite simple. We can see clearly it's at 300 degrees. Right. And the y value, let's just see. Well, it's in line with the 60, so it's a y value of 1. Okay, let me just make sure. Yeah, it's a y value of 1. Okay, so that's that coordinate over there. Right, sorry for writing it so far away. Okay, so now we have this part taken care of, right? We've found the places where these two graphs are equal. Now we have to be worried about where um, the cosine function is above, right, the sine function. Okay. Right, so let's grab our ruler. Right. I think, just to make this a little bit easier, right, let's highlight the two functions. Right, so let's highlight the cosine function in... Um, pink because I don't know for some reason with the trig functions I find it very difficult to keep track of them right so I just put them in two different colors right and then this is the sine function Okay, so it's not showing up so nicely on camera when I see properly, right? Basically, the sine function is in green and the cosine function is in pink. Okay, so let's see, right? So when is, uh, all right, so we're just looking for pink above green. Okay, so let's see. Pink above green, let's see right now. Nope, nope equal all right so there we go pink is now above green pink is above green pink is above green pink is still above green ah we've hit a x intercept right so green is going below right 
but the important thing is that pink is still above green so we keep moving okay so pink has now hit a x intercept right? so pink is now going to go um, below right but the important thing is really here is it still above green right so let's keep moving and see yep it is still above green and now it's going to start changing the pink is now below the green right so it stopped over here at the second point of intersection okay so this is where it stopped and if we go back this is where it started okay right so you can see if I close and close okay you can see throughout this entire interval pink is above green right or in other words cosine is above sine okay all right we were not done let's still carry on all right so from here moving on pink is below green pink is below green Right, so I've reached another x-intercept of the cosine function, which means that now um, the cosine function is going to go above the x-axis, right? But that's not what we focused on in this case. We are waiting for it to be above the green, right? So it's still below the green graph. And that's going to start changing now at this point, right? Just going to make a line. and it's changing now after that point of intersection again pink is above green and we have to stop here because well that's as far as the graphs were given to us but we're only given the graphs up to 360 degrees so we're going to have to stop there as well all right so let's shade in our regions again Okay, so here is, excuse me, I had to clear my throat. Right, so here is the two regions that we identified. Again, let's help you to focus, right? So that's the first one. Okay. G of X, right, G of X is above F of X, okay? And let's look at the second one right okay there you go again g of x pink is above f of x okay all right so now let's think well first of all the condition says g of x greater than or equal to f of x so obviously we are interested in these points of intersection right so we are going to include this um, x value of minus 60 degrees because that's where they are equal, right? And then we're looking at all these values in between until we get to that point where they are equal again, included, right? Then for here, we are interested in this place where they are equal, right? And then we're going to go, right? What about the 360 degrees? Well, I will include it, right, arguing this fact over here that the 60 degrees was included, okay? So I would include it. Okay. All right, so let's write down the answer. I'm trying to get everything in view here. It's not working. Uh, right, but basically, G of X 
is greater than or equal to f of x when right um, x is an element right um, and it's going to be close bracket minus 60 degrees all the way up to 120 degrees close bracket again right and in the second set it's going to be from 300 degrees right over there up until we get to 360 Okay, right, so that's it. That is a trig example, right? So that's the answers, and that's the graph. Right, so I hope that helps me, Chickalins. Right, basically, all in all, what you should have in mind, right, um, going into your exams is these conditions over here right and then you must just tackle whatever else they throw at you but this is the basic ones that they want you to know okay right, so I'm going to leave them on screen like this Right then, until next time guys, bye.